The word nano gets a lot of play these days. There's nanoparticles, nanotechnology, book on nano. Now there's nano clothing. And no, it's not the new size that models wear. Here's Adam Yamaguchi. Nano clothing, it definitely sounds futuristic. Maybe something you'd find characters wearing in a sci-fi film. In reality, it is an incredibly small technology that could have a massively big impact on what we wear and if we wash it. And we're not talking about 50 years from now. This is happening right now. This is 21-year-old Amir Patel. He is the founder of Silic, a highly specialized kind of shirt that uses nanotechnology. And as you can see, it is no ordinary shirt. This kind of shirt makes a clean break from what we've always known, engineered using nanotechnology to become a material that doesn't easily stain and even repels most liquids altogether. How? The fibers of the fabric have been manipulated deep down at the molecular level. Nanotechnology is anything that can be measured on the nanoscale. When we look at our technology under a microscope on the fiber level, looking at each individual fiber of this fabric, we can see the technology there. It's basically forming all these little microstructures that are repelling water because it's creating a high surface tension. The nanostructures in this fabric are designed to reject hydrogen atoms. And you'll remember from school, a molecule of water is made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. When the water hits that structure, it's repelling the hydrogen because it doesn't like the chemicals that are in there, and it's rolling off. As you can tell, the nanoscale is small. How small? Well, each human hair is about 100,000 nanometers wide. This nanotechnology could be applied to almost any fabric. To show you how the properties work, I can just start with spilling just a little couple of drops of water on here, and you'll see that they kind of just float around on there. And I can just go and I can put it right back in the cup and touch it and confirm that it's dry. I had nothing. Yeah. We tested water, then a light colored sports drink, a darker colored sports drink, even soy sauce, and watched them all bead up. The material so repellent to water based liquids, they drift around as though floating on air. Then I wanted to put maple syrup to the test. All right, so can I go ahead and try this? Go ahead. No way. Maple syrup has a lot of water in it. Even though with a lot of sugar and it's not as viscous as other liquids, it will mm -hmm. still roll right off. So anything water-based is not gonna penetrate our shirts here. I asked Amir what it takes to find success when doing something so new and slightly mind-bending. Did you fear that this may not succeed? I always got those notions from other people. They would always try to force their thoughts into my head saying, you know, no one's gonna want this, no one's gonna believe in this, no one's gonna wanna buy this. And sometimes when you really believe in an idea, you have to just drown out the rest of the world and just see what happens. So there is a big risk and an element of fear, but you have to push through it. It was time to do a little comparison. I'm ready to become a human canvas. First, I tried a t-shirt with no nanotechnology involved. This is a plain white shirt, and it shows everything that I spill on it. Oh. This is like an art project gone terribly, terribly wrong. Time for a change. At this filming, only black silic shirts were available to try. This is a silic shirt. Now, I know that last example was a little over the top, but uh, let's give this one a shot. <laughs> Wow, not a thing. I experienced for myself what you see here over and over. This technology seems like a thing of the future, but it is now and ready to make its mark on the world. A mark that won't leave a stain.